in the small northern Montana town of Cutbank. I can't even tell you the incredible people that are in this community. The town's critical access hospital is more like Sherry Taylor's fourth child. For me, it's very close and personal. Just like any parent, Taylor knows sleepless nights well. Going into the pandemic, she, along with her community, had already saved the hospital from going under three times. Boy, it was like a gut punch, right? I mean, when COVID hit and we were about to just get our wind and March 20th hit, and I remember all of us just went, no. <laughs> Years of shaky ground meant at times delaying paychecks. It wasn't a joke as to whether we were really going to make it or not. Um, I wasn't sure we were going to. Even worse, they had to eventually cut obstetrics, sending pregnant women hours away when it was time to give birth. And it's the same uncertainty for rural hospitals across the country. One research organization shows 180 rural hospitals have closed since 2005, with 20 alone last year, a new record. Add another 208 between 1990 and 2000, as an Office of Health and Human Services report shows. It's disheartening. People are going to have to go a long ways if there's not a hospital in an ER. I felt good how good they did to save my life. Taylor doesn't have to look far to find community members whose lives would likely look much different without the medical and financial resuscitations performed here. I'm telling you, our kid's dying. People like Kate Morissette. Um, She's not sure her 11-year-old son, Alec, would still be alive after an extreme asthma attack, followed by a bad reaction to a steroid injection. It's not a night like you don't really want to remember, but you remember it very vividly just off emotion. You're going to the hospital. And Linda Luther, whose husband may not have survived a heart attack without a hospital nearby. You don't really think about the hospital unless you're having an emergency and you need to be there. But it isn't just for you. It's for everybody in the community and all of the surrounding communities that need to come here. And it's really important. In many cases, these rural hospitals are the heart of a small town's economy. If you drive across our state and any hospital that is in that community, it is typically the largest private employer. And every one of those creates high paying jobs. So how did this hospital survive one blow after another when so many others fell? Okay. Taylor gives credit to a few things. The most recent COVID relief money to help small hospitals stay afloat. There's also Medicaid expansion, a provision in the Affordable Care Act that provides coverage for a larger pool of low-income people. Without coverage for those recipients, hospitals eat the costs. Other states, for whatever reason uh, they've chosen, have not expanded Medicaid, and that has made it extremely difficult for these hospitals to remain financially viable. And so in our state, where we've been able to reduce the number of uninsured uh, from you know uh, the mid-20s down to about 6% uninsured, is a huge uh, impact on these smaller facilities. Taylor's Glacier County has one of the highest percentage of Medicaid recipients in the state of Montana. And it was critical. I mean, it made all the difference in the world. Without getting paid for those patients and the care that we were providing, I don't know how we could retain the services we have here and we would not be the hospital where we are today. And somewhat I question whether we would even be financially viable at all. And beyond those financial boosts, the community, one of the poorest counties in Montana, stepped up time and time again, first in 2001. They raised $600,000 to take over a hospital, right? And that wasn't the end of it. In 2004, we hit some really hard times again, felt like we were not going to make it. And the community and business members stepped up and co-signed loans for us to over a quarter million dollars. And we were, th we were within weeks of shutting down. The medical center also joined a much larger hospital group. It means a bigger support team, backup, and a financial safety net. For many, many years, we've only had like seven days cash on hand at any one time, right? So that's unheard of. Uh, but definitely, What should it be? Oh, it should be 180. Now they have over 90 days cash on hand, the highest Taylor's ever seen it. Did I define it or did it define me? Um, and I think sometimes challenging times really builds a lot of character or you don't survive. And survive they did. Taylor has been CEO not once. Making a difference has always been a driver for me. But twice. And for the first time since she started here in 1996, 
The fear of closing these doors permanently doesn't keep her up at night. Maritza Giorgio, Newsy, Cutbank, Montana.